Sorry, guys. Okay. Let me get that set up. I never know which way to go. Oh, boy. Let's see if anybody gets on. Nobody on yet. <laughs> well, if you guys get on, I can answer your uh, your fountain pen questions. Oh, we got somebody. We got two people now. I'm trying to load up my uh, text here. Here we go. Okay. Just uh, someone chime in if you can hear me all right, if anyone is there. Nick G. All right, there we go. So, yeah, we're just going to go for it. No agenda, no uh, preset stuff. You can hear me okay. Thank you very much, Nick. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Brandon. So yeah, anyone who's got questions, I got stuff set up. I got some pens out, and uh, you know, I got boxes here. So if there's any pens you you see that I have that you would like to know about or ask some questions on, do some, some comparisons, just any random questions, even about fountain pens. I know someone was asking about Parker Fifty Ones. So anything you see or you saw me do and wanted to know a little more about it. We'll just shoot the stuff, see what we can come up with. Hello there, Arc Speed. Thanks for joining in. Uh, these boxes, by the way, I make these myself, so I get old cigar boxes. And then I uh, I cut a blank for them. So I get a router, and I do some routing on it. Then I do a little sewing, glue the, uh, the felt or different liners in there. You got different size. This box isn't too big. So it's better for like my vintage pens. But then I got these bigger ones. Oh, that's too high in the way. So I can fit the long pens, even like the Ranga here. The 9B fits in here, no problem at all. Lamy All-Star didn't make the cut. I need to, uh, no, it didn't get its own slot. I'm a little bit cramped. So actually I got about seven or eight more boxes that I got to finish off. But yeah, I know everything's getting crowded here. So they're having to share a little bit and, and go everywhere they can. I don't think, oh no, it can. So yeah, this box can even fit the Jumbo ACR, which is the largest pen I've ever come across. There could be bigger out there. But yeah, the Ranga 9B. So what's the, the metal cap blue body? Don Tomas, that is the uh, this box here. Thank you for asking. Metal cap blue body. Are you talking about this guy here? Was that Mr. Nix? This one here, if you're wondering. Yes, okay. This is my Parker 51. So this is the, uh, the special. So it's got the Luster Lloyd cap. And... Uh, the Octavian nib, so it's just essentially it's an alloy, so but it's just got eight different metals in it. It's nicer than a, a standard steel nib that I find on, on other pens. But yeah, so this is the Aerometric Parker 51, super reliable pen. There you go. Yeah, I like it too. I have a, uh, a Vacuumatic that I picked up super cheap on gold nib, gold cap, everything. It just needs the new vacuum 
set up in the back, so it needs to get resacked in that, but it's actually in pretty decent shape. All right. Any other questions on pens? If you have inks or nibs, you if you want me to compare a couple pens because there's something you're thinking of buying, or you just want a size comparison or whatever, just post a question and uh, ask away. That's what this is for. Thank you very much. I... Uh, yeah, I just try to, I don't know, I just do whatever I want to do in my videos. Centenu, was it? Uh, Shantenu. Thank you for the comment. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know, I really actually don't watch many other pen review videos. I just do videos and stuff I'm thinking about. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I don't know. Like the whole fountain pen on plane stuff, I thought about that. I thought, well, we're going to be getting back on planes, I better figure this out. On this guy here, so this is the Rembrandt. This is a fine. And it writes more like a medium. So if we can have a look at that, that's the, the fine. When I first got it, it's, it's super, super uh, smooth. But uh, it's okay. I actually use this for quite a while, but um, the, the cappy mechanism, mechanism kind of bugs me a little bit. The the edge there just hits, but it's, it's an all in all good pen. Um, again, a little too wide for my liking. So this is on the, on the list of nibs I might grind. Uh, where do I get my vintage pens? So I got, um, I got uh, my very first vintage pen was my Parker 51. I got that from someone local. Um, so I'm fortunate enough where I'm, I'm part of the Vancouver pen club. And we actually, when we did meetings in person, I got to meet someone there and he restores old pens and um yeah he sh i thought i should get a, a vintage pen so he showed me and i got to try a few out and he had a bunch of parker 51s and some other ones and i really really like this one but my other ones that i have so i got uh oh, let's see here so these are my vintage ones i have got a couple more i don't have a ton just a few Uh, and then I got this guy. So just four uh, vintage pens. But yeah, this one in person, and these ones were online. These were all actually eBay. So uh, you just got to be patient and find the right one that you're looking for and the right price. Hopefully people got good reviews. You do a lot of research so you can sort of see what's good and what's bad, what you like, what you don't like. And you take a bit of a leap of faith as always, but uh, I haven't had any problems. I've been pretty happy with my with my eBay vintage pen purchases. Uh, Nick, you're asking that blue, which blue? The Estabrook? Well, how did I learn to fix them? Uh, by taking them apart and then figuring out how to put it back together. So, I mean, I, I guess I have a bit of an advantage uh, with my background with engineering so like taking these apart is not crazy i used to deal with a lot of precision measurement tools with lasers and lenses and machining parts and all sorts of stuff so working with precision equipment is just kind of the norm um so yeah you, you learn about how things go together and uh, assembly procedures and things you should do and not do and what how much when too much force is is really near if you're doing something trying to take something apart and you're like that doesn't seem right I, I sort of have that feel um so yeah definitely my background with engineering has has helped with this i'm a fix it kind of guy anyways even on cars old cars new cars stuff around the house it don't really matter i'm just sort of good with that kind of stuff am i daily using my vintage pens yeah and do you use them till the ink runs out um yeah, some of them, like there's been many times where I've, I would use this for almost a month straight as one of my daily carries. Um, this is my case all the time. So I've had this for several years now, maybe three, something like that. And uh, it is with me every single day and it always has two pins and the thing just works fantastically, right? So it just works great. Um, so it always has two pens in it. And a lot of times I'll have this guy with me. I'll carry my Parker 51. 
this one right now is not great for everyday carry. It's I still have to f fix some of the ink flow stuff, but um, yeah, I've I've been using them a lot, and then they'll run out of ink, and I'll re-ink them again. So yeah, this one and this one the most I've I've used kind of as a daily carry. This one just for more specialty stuff. This has the oblique broad um, nib on it. It's a factory oblique broad, so it's I don't use this a ton. Have I lost a pen? You got the best. He's just asking questions. That's awesome. Thanks, Nick. Um, I don't think I have. If you hear some noises in the background, it's just me having a sip here. I don't think I uh, I have lost a pen. I thought I lost my Leonardo, but I ended up finding it in the garage, like in a case that was sort of abandoned with some other pens. So um, that's as close as it came. I, I have not lost a pen. And... You know, this is truly a, a daily carry pen. It is with me. This is my 149. I use my pens. Uh, it is with me, like, all the time. So this is one of the ones that's typically in there as well, and it's with me everywhere I go. Starbucks, the office, wherever. Uh, do I... I have not used any Iron Gall inks. No. I haven't used any of those yet. Uh, I'm a little little just cautious of what they can do especially like uh if you i hope you guys like the microscope stuff i did with all the sheening inks that was actually just that was for me i want to figure it out but when you see how good that i'm trying to get the writing sample out here just bear with me but if you see how good that ink looks um just looks amazing and i'm like i gotta figure this out how does it do that and so when we got up close and personally got to see what the ink looks like and then you start thinking about what that's going to do to your pen. So um, I guess with iron galls, I, again, I don't know much about them. If I would to use them, I'd use it and probably flush it out after a very short period of time. I would definitely would not leave it inside the pen. And I would avoid uh, any any vintage pens, stuff like that, for sure. John, thanks. Yeah, I, I, I take a scientific approach to everything. So... <laughs> Even, yeah, any anything I'm any, anytime I'm anywhere, even when I got my Moscow mule mugs right away, I started inspecting the how they put this together. And now I'm like, oh, this is going to fall apart. That's the weak point. So um, that's just what I had to do all the time. So I just do that all the time. Every time I do anything, I always think physics and science. That's just, it's in me. I've tried put, I have not, I don't have a, a little UV light source. I um I actually used to have like a UV microscope that I did all sorts of testing when I worked in the printing industry, but I don't have a uh, a UV light. I should I should just get one. They're super cheap. That's a good idea. I wonder what that would do. Oh, not using any vodka. <laughs> Normally I do. I'm all out. So I just got uh, diet tonic and lime. That's it. That's my go-to. You can have as many as you want. Ah. Uh. Yeah, when I, uh, this was a big pen for me, and I tell you, when I, I don't know if I told this story on the channel, but when I got the pen, you know, the nib was disappointing right away. It was new old stock. Maybe that's why it was old stock, because it just, the nib sucked. So anyways, I, um, I sent the pen out to a place to get the nib done, and so I built a, like, bulletproof pen transporter <laughs> for this thing of electrical conduit and it was even like pressure fit on the end so the pen would float and there's no way anything could happen to it and um you want me to do landscape sure uh i haven't got the books yet so if i do landscape do i just rotate oh let's just see what happens i want to do landscape let's see what happens on my it just does that yeah that doesn't work um here, just give me one second, bud. Let me see if I can... Uh, <laughs> I don't see an option to go... Yeah, I'll have to look into that next time, Ron. But uh, I wanted to go uh, landscape as well instead of portrait. I couldn't find out how to do it. Uh, okay, let me go back to the questions here. They're fairly safe. Yeah, avoid them with vintage. That's what I thought, too, for Iron Gall. Uh, yeah, I'll try to do... 
I'll try to figure out how to do landscape next time. And Brandon, oh, have I used, have you found that Lamy black nibs have more issues than silver ones? Oh, um, you know, let me see. I just got, oh no, this is a silver one too. Um, I only got this one, uh, well, this is the all-star, but it's very similar to the Safari. And I got it because that's one of the kind of first pens you go to. And I got it. I've never been in love with it. I've used it. Just, I don't know. It doesn't really do it for me. The Radley clip. There's a little bit too. You can see it's gotten some use and abuse. I've chipped the anodized on it pretty good. So whatever. As you can tell, I use my pens. Before I had a case, obviously. Uh, but uh, yeah, the nibs on these guys here just don't seem that great. I really don't care much for them. And I've had a medium. I've had extra fine. And just uh, I, I tried a black one as well. And it was kind of equally as sort of crappy. But they're gold nibs. I, I've... I have enjoyed those a lot. So this new, the medium I had on this guy was super smooth. This new extra fine that I got, I thought that looked pretty cool. And that little architect grind I got going on, I've been absolutely loving that. And same with this guy for an extra fine, right? Super well. With a diplomat arrow, sure. Let's do it. Uh, so the diplomat, I got a extra fine. Where is the diplomat? This box, here it is. Okay, let's do it. So this is for Richard, who wants a writing sample. Birmingham Pimps. No, haven't uh, tried them, haven't even heard of them. But I have heard of them now, so thanks for uh, sharing that. Let's get inky. Whoa. I thought about doing a video, actually, of things you would hear, like, say, at a fountain pen convention that you could take out of context and they sound kind of kind of rude. You might talk about like, oh, it's a gusher for certain, but it's just little things. If you caught it the wrong way, uh, you, you might go, hey, what are they talking about? Let's do, uh, let me get some ink. Sure, let's go for some sheen. Flushing your ink sack, <laughs> yes. There was one guy threw down a comment for my flex pen, said, spread the tines. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> okay, let's uh, ink it up. So this is the Vinta, one of the sheening inks I did. Ooh, this uh, Diplomat might, might be actually a bit, uh, I don't know. It seemed like I left ink in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Comments will be coming. Okay. Like, oh, I need a Kleenex. You could say that. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The arrow is one of the smoother steel nibs. It's pretty decent. Um, I mean, it's an extra fine. So what do you expect for an extra fine? But it's not too bad. So here we go. We'll do the writing sample. I'm trying to line it up here. Where are there we are. Oh, yeah. See, this pen, I left it abused. Let's see. It could be a little clogged up. Let's prime it good. Let's see what happens. I am. <laughs> this is the only place. This is her desk, man. So I got to wipe it all the time. Oh. Let's see if we can get something flowing through. Yeah, this guy's clogged. This needs to go in the ultrasonic. I'll keep trying for you, bud. See what we can do. <laughs> of all the pens you picked, it's the one where I open it and go, oh, boy, that's been sitting for a while, and it's uh, it's a big gummy. Yeah, we're going to have to pass. Damn it. Get a look at what it looks like, but uh, it is decent for an extra fine. Okay, I will email you, Ron. Okay, maybe it was just delivered the other day. I wasn't at my office, so maybe it uh, maybe got delivered. All right. Do we have any other pen requests? Because the only one that's come in is uh, Hoopa Juped at the moment. I, I can't. Oh, I'll just keep doing some squigglies. We'll see what happens. 
Oh, the diplomat representative have left the chat. Yeah, this thing's good. When I uh, was pulling the piston up, there was almost like a air stuck, and I just go, it just sucked up as soon as I pulled it out. So I think it's really gummed up in there. Yeah. All right. Well, that one's gone. We can try a different pen. So this is my uh, oblique double broad that I did. This thing's a ton of fun. So this is the uh, Jumbo ACR. So was it review the Lime Old? Uh, oh, I, I did. I did the uh, Nick. I did the uh, review of that nib on the Dialogue 3. Yeah. Check on the channel. It's like a couple videos ago. I uh, I did it. So uh, there you go. Yeah, Diplomats. Yeah. The wet pen. Yeah, the only reason I'm struggling with this one is I think I left this thing inked for several months <laughs> so it's not the pen's fault that is all on me yeah it's just gooed up it looked bad even the ink and the converter looked bad oh where do i usually buy my pens richard um well i am in vancouver area right so i go to the vancouver pen shop i get some stuff there but uh everywhere so pen chalet goulet pens uh ebay um, oh, I got, oh, I'll give you guys all a warning. We'll do this. Um, where's my other one? Nope, not here. Hold on. I got stuff everywhere. All right, here we go. So I went to, uh, Marta Modena, the website, and, uh, this one, it was a couple of years ago. And I wasn't quite sure if they were legit or not, but I got one. This is their uh, Dolce Vita. And yeah, I'm super happy with the pen. I got it crazy on sale. It was like a two in the morning situation. I couldn't sleep, just happened to check their site and they had some discount code. And so I got this pen for like under a hundred bucks. And so I was super happy with it. Fun pen, really great. So I kept watching their, uh, their, their site and they have auctions for high-end pens as well really wanted to get one of these bad and but eventually you know i would bid and bid and bid and it's at my hard price not win not win not win and finally i got this one and it came in awesome super happy with it the price i couldn't beat it and then i had such good luck there was another pen i wanted to get it was another one that they made there looked great bought it it came in and uh it was nothing like in there it was terrible it took six full turns to undo the cap it was insane six pen six turns and just it was garbage it was there was a lot of dings all over it so i told them i'm not happy with it they said sure ship it back so i shipped it back they got the pen and they didn't refund my money so they just uh yeah totally screwed me over so yeah these guys here i would never ever ever buy from them again that was just absolutely brutal they took my money So any other, is there any other questions? Any pens you see, questions you have, inks, things, whatever it is, whatever you want to see. Um, also too, if you leave maybe in the comments, even just let me know what stuff you would like to see for the, some of the next videos. Do I have a Pilot A23? Here it is. Uh, it's not a Falcon, but let's do... Oh, I'm pushing them all out of the way. <laughs> uh, the 88 and the 88 P's. Ichiro. Hey, buddy. You were asked... What was the... You submitted a question. I, I should answer yours... Um, ahead of time because there was a question you asked and i don't i can't access the chat while i'm on the phone but there was a question you asked in the uh 
let if you can type it in there, Ichiro Fika name, let me know and I'll answer your stuff. Oh, if I were to design my own pen. So if we are let's um let's just get back to who asked about the 823. Oh, I'm trying to look at the chat at the same time. That was Richard. Yeah, I got an 823. Did you have any questions on it or you just want to know? Just let me know that. If I were to um design a pen, what materials would I use? That's such a tough one because the materials is totally going to be dependent uh, on what you have available. Sure, I'll do a writing sample. Should you get an 823? If um, if your wallet says okay and you like the looks of it, it's a great pen. It's a solid performer. There's really nothing wrong with it. The build quality is phenomenal. Like These are probably the best threads on any pen I own. Like You can engage it just a touch. It's just... This is very well built. So this is, I did that. I went off on the Lamy 2000, did my engineering review and all that stuff. And I, I did that because as I looked at it, I was blown away at the little things I spotted. So this is like the exact opposite of the Lamy 2000 from design. Um, the A23 has the same girth as 146. I don't, I, yeah, I don't have a 146, not sure. Um, and sort of with Japanese, it's always try to make the the most from what you have so you don't have to do like they did nothing was no idea was left on the table for this guy with this guy it's very simple how it's made very simple parts um it still takes a ton of craftsmanship and all the injection molding is phenomenal oh heavy pens yes i'll, I'll chat about that um the craftsmanship is phenomenal. It's built super well. So it's sort of that minimal things you need to make an amazing pen. So that's sort of the difference I find between the German and the Japanese. But the 823. You like the uh, Lamy videos. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have always kind of held back on doing stuff like that. Because that's what I look at. I didn't know if you guys would be interested. So here's the pilot. 823. This has a fine. It's got a little bit of a bounce to it. Nice and wet. You know, just a great pen. So there you go. Pilot 823. Do you have any other questions on the 823? Keep the nerd videos coming. I will, because I'm a nerd. There's no way I can stop it. So, questions about heavy pens. Okay, so Ichiro. Um, heavy pens are okay as long as they're balanced, right? So, let me give you an example. That's a heavy pen. I can even break out the scale. What ink is in the 823? I, I have no idea. No idea what's in there. Um... Oh, my, my heaviest pen, I think, is actually at the office. That's the Faber-Castell Emotion. That one's at the office. But these are kind of reasonably heavy pens. Um, heavy pens are all right as long as the balance is all right. right. Like this guy, it's pretty heavy. It sits okay in my hand. And I think I sort of have that advantage is I got a, a big hand. So if there's a lot of weight in the back, it, it's still kind of sitting in the cradle of my hand a little bit. But this guy, for example, it's not that heavy. The body's fine, but when you back weight it with that cap, like I get it for most people, that would not be comfortable, especially if you're more upright. This is not going to be good. But for me, it's just I got a decent sized hand, so it, it kind of sits in here and floats, and it doesn't it doesn't bother me. So I think heavier pens, and it sort of makes sense, would be not as bad as if you got a big hand just because it can take the weight and the, and the, and the size of the, of the pen. Um, but yeah, if you've got a smaller hand, uh, heavy pens, unless they're very, very, very well balanced, and uh, it might be a bit tricky. But so far, like my my heaviest pen, I think, is that Faber-Castell Emotion, and it's, it's very well balanced. It just happens to work really well. The car wash. Yeah, I just thought about that on the way to work. <laughs> I uh, had the pen and I was just like, you know, I got to wash the car. And I was like, I wonder how this thing will do. So let's do both. So for the Parker alternative for the Parker Emerald ink, I don't own the Parker Emerald ink. 
Um, but let me get my ink book. I can show you some greens. Here, let me get some of these out of the way and not abuse them totally. Uh, let's see here. Let's go through. Let me find you a few greens. So let me find an amber. Oh, you know, there is a, uh, I think a Monteverde. This is Monteverde emerald green. It's cheap and very uh, easily accessible. Does the heavy pen inertia smooth out the handwriting? Um, it's tough to say. Like, it all depends on, on your writing style. If you've kind of noticed with my writing, I'm very, like, like, I'll do a slow move and, like, so very kind of harsh almost a little bit. So... Um, I, I think if you were a more consistent flow to your writing, like most people do, it's probably, it's probably okay. I find the problem I have with like inertia, like you mentioned, is typically if the pen, if the nib is super, super smooth, one of the reasons I didn't like the medium in this, because it was so smooth, it would just go and just, there was no slowing it down. So maybe, and this is a heavy pen, so maybe if it's really smooth and it's a heavy pen, it actually might be backwards to the inertia. You're going to have more inertia with it. So it, it might kind of speed things up a little bit. I, I had trouble controlling this pen with the medium too. Plus, I don't like a medium, but I also just had trouble controlling it. And this is a heavy pen too. But now that I got the Architect, I absolutely love it. Tons of fun. Favorite blue, green, blue, and red. Sure. Um, so anyways, here's the emerald green. Man, we're all over the place. Okay, so emerald green. If you like that, the Monteverde. I actually, I like this color. I only have it in cartridges, but uh, it's got some nice shading to it as well. So if you want another emerald green, I'm trying to think. If I have, I do have some other greens. I don't have a bunch of them, but I do have some. Let me just see if I can think what would be a good emerald green. The, yeah, these, I just got these on, um, whatchamacallit, AliExpress. So, Asso green. And it's not too bad. It's a little bit light. You can see there in the wetness test, it's kind of like a, almost like a minty kind of color. Um, I'll see about some other greens. Yeah, this is another one from Alibaba. I think it's the same one as the other one. Carcos. And then I know there's the Diamine Sherwood green, so you're going to go a little bit darker there as well. But I think if you want another alternative for an emerald green that's close to that, Monteverde emerald green. And I know I got green green, but this is pretty bright. So it's a much, much brighter green. River of Fire is nice too. The Robert Oster River of Fire. It's a very pleasant color, a little bit of shading. Good for uh, everyday usage as well. So I use this in my regular pens all the time. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, solid copper pen. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, what do people, when I about those intrigued by my pen? Uh, well, we don't typically get much into price on the pens. You know, people will see a pen and go, oh, that's really nice. And they think it's nice and then sometimes they'll ask to use it and then they get to give it a right and they think oh that's really nice but yeah not often actually does it does price of the pen ever come up really but it uh you know if anything it usually kind of catches their eye and it's just something to have a conversation with so this guy i've been super happy with the group buy i don't know if anyone on here has gotten on that group buy but yeah what a difference between the i kept getting on the Review for this guy, I kept screwing up the names, the 8B and the 9B. I thought they were the same pen. But uh, so you can see here's the 8B. This one here is the 8B, and this is the 9B. But yeah, just the premium finish, like just the quality of everything. It's There's no step on this one. And uh, yeah, just the finish as well. Like for this price, this pen was a phenomenal buy for the price, for sure. But um yeah, the fit and finish, like the threads, they are getting better, but, you know, it wasn't quite the best. It's still kind of hokey. This one's perfect, and because it's it's smooth there, it's a firm stop, so when you tighten it, 
you can't over tighten it so just very very for a handmade pen in that price that's a phenomenal buy and then there was someone was asking about inks favorite green blue and red oh there's so many <laughs> we change ink colors all the time i know the uh I mean, I got an extra bottle of this by accident, so I am using it a lot just to use it. But I really like this Majestic Blue by Diamine. It's just, it's a nice color. I, I have to go with saturated inks quite a bit just because um, a lot of stuff I'm doing documentation and then it has to um, be scanned. So I need something that's fairly, fairly rich, fairly saturated so it can get picked up on the scanner. A favorite green, I would say... Yeah, is it River of Fire or Lake of Fire? River of Fire. Yeah, I had it open here a second ago, but River of Fire, I really like that by Robert Oster. And the red, if I were to pick that, the, uh, of course, the Rider's Blood. I only have two reds, but this one, this is great. I, I could use this every single day. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, yeah, what's, what is it? <laughs> what's a wet ink? Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a big learning curve when you get in the fountain pens. There's a ton of stuff to learn. But I think that's why I kind of like it. Because I always like learning new stuff. Yeah. Super popular, these Leonardo pens. But if you want to get your first stub... Oh, of course it's not inked. I would recommend this pen in a second. Let's 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 get some sheen on it. So this is that uh, Vinta. All right. So I'll do this, and how long have we been going? 35 minutes, geez. So we'll give it a little bit more. I'll do a writing sample here, and if there's no other questions, we can wrap it up. Just let me know. And uh, same with, if you guys want to leave some comments on video suggestions, that would be great too. I got a bunch of ideas in my book, but I always like to hear what you guys want, because it's a guessing game for me to know what kind of videos do you guys want to see. I'm trying to adjust my tripod so I can get you sort of close. This is just such a lovely stuff. It's super smooth. I have a Twisby 1.1 millimeter but uh, they are nowhere near each other. Sorry about the lighting. I normally film this in landscape and I can get less shadows. But this is just a wicked nib. And you can already see that sheen just starting a little bit. There we go. Doesn't take long. This is Vinta. Paper review. Okay. So, uh, what do you say? There's something from high end to what a person can pick up at a local box store. Yeah, I have a few papers. Like, I don't have a ton of papers. That's why I haven't done paper reviews i did i did one on on uh, muji paper because i i really like their stuff because it's very affordable but the only paper i've used is like claire fontaine erodia uh muji quite a bit and they have some other like dollar store notebooks that i've used but i can do a quick one on that as well but yeah, i don't have any of the tomo river and there's so many more papers i just i don't have many of them because uh they can get pretty expensive and i, I go through a lot of paper Maybe a video on the science behind capillary action. Yeah, I could do something like that. Of a Kasama pen. I don't even know what a Kasama pen is. So I'll have to look that up what that is afterwards. Is there anything in this guy? Well, there we go. How does a Twisby Extra Fine compare to a Lamy 2K Extra Fine? Okay. Let me, uh, I don't know if I have here. Just give me a second. I could maybe do that for you right now. That's, you actually might be very lucky. 
if I can do that for you. I either have a fine or an extra fine on my Twisby. I can't remember. Let's have a look. That's for Jun. What do we got on here? I'm trying to look on the camera. It's just a fine. So I don't have a uh, extra fine on the Twisby. My VAC 700 I have is a fine. So what I'll do right now, since this one is inked, I can show you a Twisby fine and the Lamy 2000 extra fine. The Filipino May pen. Okay, I'll check into that. So this is a Twisby back 700. Okay, and we'll get you the Lamy 2000. Whoops, there we go. So we'll just do this right side by side. Get you in close. Getting some shadows going on there, there, but it looked fairly close. I'd say the the Lamy Extra Fine is a little bit finer than the Twisby Fine, and I think a Twisby Extra Fine would be a little bit more narrow than the Lamy Two Thousand Extra Fine. Hope that helped. Do you think it's worth buying a Memento Zero over a Lamy Two Thousand? That's a they're so different. So I mean, one you got a gold nib on here, which is pretty cool piston filler um, and this is just your classic Italian pen where it's just really pretty and all the beautiful reflections and stuff as well you know a little more basic from a manufacturing and design standpoint cartridge converter so uh, yeah and just even design is so wildly different and you for that same price point you're looking at a steel nib versus a gold nib uh, not that gold is always better. Uh, you know, this the 1.1 in here is fantastic. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. As far as maybe if you could only have one of them, I'd probably go with this guy. But uh, just because the pop cap is super nice and the threads, like I have this issue, I showed this before on the blind cap. Oh, I can feel it just cutting it. You can see all the dust that gets in there. So just way too sharp and coarse of a thread for going into that material. So that's one thing that just, that drives me bonkers. Uh, let's see, the line width seem to be similar, but the wetness on the 2K seems to be way more wet. Let's, uh, let's do a quick wetness test. So here's the 2000. There. Let's do the 700. 700 is reasonably wet. Let's see. Yeah, so I'd say the 2000 is just a touch more. I think they're fairly close, but maybe the 2000 just a little bit more. But pretty darn close to each other for wetness, I think. And let me see. I'm just trying to see any stuff I've missed. Trying to scroll back up the comments. There we go. Okay, so we've been, oh geez, 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, if there's any other questions, I'll kind of make a couple minute warning here. If you have any questions on any of the pens or want me to see something or a comparison, I'm game. I got the uh, writer's blood in my 149. It looks great on this pen as well. Ugh, it's terrible. But yeah, this is, I actually, before I ground my 149, You'd think I'd practice on a bunch of nibs. I practiced on one nib. 
I got it. I had a super cheap pen and I, I don't know if it was a Jin Hao or something else. And, uh, I practiced on it and it turned out really well, like super great the first try. And I thought, well, let's do the big pen. So I actually, <laughs> I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I send this off to someone to, to fix my damage. But uh, yeah, first I did one pen before I did. I went after this 149 for grinding. Um, Aurora Borealis, yeah, that sounds like a really good ink. I've seen pictures of it, it looks great. But, oh, yeah, I, I got sidetracked with my story. When I made my pen tube, I uh, trial fitted it. So you have to use that, uh, the gluey goo, like you use the PVC piping style glue, and to put it all together. So I put it together, let it dry, or at least I thought I did. And I put the pen into the tube. Everything fit great. I took it out, and I had PVC glue all over the body. And the pen was, I don't know, maybe three hours old in my hands. And so I kind of crapped my pants, but I immediately went to an auto body shop that was nearby and I wet sanded it right in my office <laughs> to get the stuff off. And then I had some buffing compound, buffed it up and it actually looked better than when I just got it out of the box brand new. So that was a crazy story for my 149. I think this is why I like this pen so much as well. I ground the nib myself, saved it from, uh, what I thought was immediate death, and I, I use it every single day. About custom duties. Yeah, it is, you mean like when you buy a pen and it comes in, they charge you a duty. It is what it is. I know the, the pricing too is so different all around the world. Cult pens, you can pick up if you're looking to get a high-end uh, pelican you know i love to support local but the pricing that uh, they're making them pay here for these is just through the roof and uh you know i got hit with duty on it as well but uh it was still significantly cheaper even with a really bad canadian dollar at that time okay a repair and polish sure i can do like a polishing one um for repair I haven't done a lot of like, you know, replacing sacks and stuff like that in old pens. I, I do a lot of tweaking with nibs. So getting the flow right, the alignment, stuff like that. Have you seen me? I do grinding as well. Um, so I, I'm not much of an expert if you want to show me how to take a vintage pen and then restore it. I've done a little bit of that, but not a whole bunch. But science ones too. Yeah, okay. Glad you like them. I got more ideas on that stuff as well. Opinion on sailor nibs. Um, there, I, I, again, I, I've only owned one briefly for like an hour. I gifted somebody a, a, a sailor with a gold nib. It was a new one. Beautiful pen. It wrote really well. They look quite lovely. Um, you can get some sales and then the prices are a little bit more reasonable. The only thing with the sailors is they, they're a bit small for me. They're regular size pens. So, I want to get a larger pen and it's you know, I'm looking at something like the King of Pens or at least a 1911 large. Um, that pen's not overly expensive, but I, probably a King of Pen would be the one I want. And that's such an expensive pen. And it's uh, their little cartridge converter and the tiny converter as it is. So that's the part that's kind of put me off from spending a lot on the sailors. But they are lovely pens. I have used their nibs a bit. And they're great. They're really good. And the build quality, is it's... You know, it's a Japanese pen, so you're 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 gonna have trouble finding a, a really bad manufacturer, a Japanese manufacturer for a pen. So, what I have used of Sailors, I think they're fantastic. Um, I just got to be into it for a pretty stiff price tag for the right size of pen I want from Sailor. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, the new Habanero, I saw that as well. Looks great. All right, we're uh geez, 50 minutes coming in on an hour. So I think I, th I think we should be good. <laughs> I think we've gone long. I'll wrap it up unless someone has a quick question before we go. I'll uh, call it quits for the night. Want to say big thank you for everyone watching. Like I just randomly decided to do a YouTube. Uh am I planning a pen show? Um no, I I don't know. It's just scheduling for me is is crazy. Um 
like with the little kids and stuff. So I don't have a lot of free time to, to go to a pen show. So not in the immediate future. Um, when's the next video coming? I don't know. I make them at like 11, 12, one, sometimes two in the morning. So <laughs> that's when I have time to do it. And so I do the video Then I, everything's done on my phone. I edit on my phone. And so I, I really, uh, I don't, I try to do two or three a week. But uh, when I exactly do them and when I have the time, it's it's kind of tricky. But uh, there we go. All right, we'll uh, we'll catch you guys later. Again, thanks for everyone who's been subscribing and watching and commenting. It's great. I'm surprised I even got one subscriber in the first place. But now we're rolling, so uh, no problem. I thought I'd just give you guys an opportunity. Any questions you have? Because I know pens are expensive, and you think should I buy this one or I want to know a size difference before you make a purchase or just whatever. That's why I did this because, you know, nothing worse than thinking this is going to be the best pen ever and you get it and there's something that disappoints you that you didn't know about or was just a little different than you thought. So we'll do this again at some point. I appreciate everyone tuning in who's been watching and subscribing as always. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Adios.